My favorite villain is actually one of the oldest ones I've ever seen, besides Zerg from Buzz Lightyear, when I was a child, but, um, my favorite villain, surprisingly, is Dr. Cortex from the Crash Bandicoot series, and, uh, he's known for, you know, he's bad, and he's humorous and well-known for the creator of Crash Bandicoot, the main character in the story. Well, um, while he is silly and not always villainous, he has actually, in the other games, been quite, you know, an interesting enemy to come to, and it's always kind of a joy when you're at the last level and get to fight him. But, um, I always enjoyed playing the games all my life. I've actually still played them, even now we have Xbox Live and all that, but I still play, uh, hook up my PlayStation 2 and play the old Crash Bandicoot games. But I just wanted to go ahead and talk about him for a while and tell the story about him, because probably not many people know who he is anymore. Dr. Cortex is, um, well, he was the first villain you pretty much uh, see in Crash Bandicoot, along with his assistant, Brio, who is pretty much never seen again until the newer games show him, which I have no care for, but, um, Cortex is yellow, pretty much like The Simpsons, I guess, but, um, yellow, he has a black beard, sort of bald, yeah, really bald, and probably the most notable thing is how he has a bold letter N on his forehead. Uh, he always is wearing a white lab coat, and his gloves usually change colors throughout the game, starting from yellow to black to red. He's known to be the enemy in pretty much every single Crash Bandicoot game, except one for the Game Boy Advance, which, um, I don't remember which one. I played it and I beat it, but I, that was one of my least favorite of the Crash games, but, um, He's been a, he's pretty much been the main villain in every single game, despite games like Crash Bash where he's a playable character, and Crash Team Racing where he's uh, also a playable character. Dr. Cortex and Brio use something called the Cortex Vortex in the first game, and I believe throughout a few other games they use the same technology possibly for um to bring animals to life, but make them his minions as he called them commandos, or his personal army. He was doing this by collecting animals and using his Cortex Vortex on animals to make them more elite and work for him. While some projects failed, such as Ripper Roo and um, Crash Bandicoot, some also succeeded, such as Pinstripe, the Komodo Brothers, Cola Kong, yeah, Dingo Dial, Tiny Tiger. So those ones worked. He also invented many other things, such as his hoverboard as it's proclaimed until the newer games, but, um... In the beginning of Crash Bandicoot 1, he's seen with his assistant, Brio, as it shows them working on Crash Bandicoot early, and as they're working on him, it fails, and basically, Crash turns to life, for whatever reason, he's wearing blue pants, I guess, but, um... He comes to life, however, it appears throughout the games that he has some mental kind of mentally challenged or something, however he feels a very smart creature, I guess. But, um, I believe the, the plot of the first game is to rescue your girlfriend, Tana, who is never seen, really, in the other games again, except cameos, but, um, Cortex kidnaps Tana, and that's the reason you're trying to get to him in the first game. So, first of all, you're just going through the islands, and um, fighting off the natives until you get to the next island. After you get to the next island, though, that's when you first meet his first, Cortex's first invention, I believe. It was, um, Ripper Roo, who is, I think, a can blue kangaroo with a lab coat that can, uh, jump really. He has, like, I think he's insane and he jumps a lot. That's the most known thing. And his crazy laughter, but, um, after you defeat him, you just work your crash works his way up towards the other islands. Like then he goes to fight Cola Kong, who's more su more successful in attacking him. He's pretty much a mouse on steroids. Good easy way to put it. But um, after you defeat him, you finally are getting close to Cortex's lab. You fight Pinstripe later, which is used to be one of my favorite characters in this story because he holds a Tom Tommy gun, but. That was a little crazy, I guess, so they took him out of the series for a while. Afterwards, you finally get to Brio, and he's pretty much an easy win. Brio is just, you know, as I said before, his Cortex's partner. 
Uh, pretty much the other scientist in it. That's kind of nuts. After him, Crash finally gets up to the uh, Cortex's airship, which is a Zeppelin. And on top of it, Crash confronts Cortex on his hoverboard and reflects his deflex, his incoming rays. And the green ball to be what you hit back at him, and then afterwards he would, after like four hits, he would finally fall down and explode. Oh my god. 